from Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube covering WTG Transform 2019. Brought to you by Winslow Technology Group. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's exclusive coverage of WTG Transform 2019. It's the Winslow Technologies Dell EMC User Group, and therefore we are always thrilled when not only do we have a user on the program, but we have a local user who's also the Chief Information Officer, Sean Rothman, who is the Chief Information Officer, CIO of the town of Weymouth, coming up from the South Shore. Nice, easy drive when the traffic isn't too bad. Sean, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, glad to be here. It's, it's Boston, though, so there is no such thing as the <laughs> traffic being easy. So. Yeah, the, the traffic and the weather, just wait a little while, it'll change greatly. <laughs> uh, we, we've got the Mass Pike right behind us with Fenway, and yeah, it is starting to get to the evening, uh, you know, Friday commute back, um, but uh, you're probably going to the Sox game, so you won't have to worry about exactly. that. Exactly, that's my plan, is oh. to wait it out. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, Town of Weymouth, about 12 miles from where we're sitting right now. Uh, it, you know, you're the CIO. Give us a little bit about you know what that means to be the CIO of a town here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Yeah, so, uh, you know, IT is, is um, so different when you get out of the, uh, the corporate setting. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of high needs or, or requirements. There's a lot of uh, public safety needs, things like that, that are that are um, consuming often, um, but the drive isn't always there to take advantage of it. How many people yeah. that you serve uh, in, in the community and uh, your team itself, uh, how many people you're managing, just to give us a little bit of the, the yeah. scope. So, so at Weymouth, we have uh, about 500 full-time employees within the town side and another, yeah. you know, more than 2,000 if you take in our schools. Now, we have a separate IT department for our schools. Um, we share uh, combined networks. Um, so we have a, a private dark fiber network with, that runs throughout the town that we, we share. Um, I provide uh, services for police, fire, DPW, emergency management, uh, you know, finance, uh, all the things that you kind of do, uh, public works. and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of different areas. There's a lot of different needs and ways that we can uh, meet the needs of the public. Okay, that's awesome. And so underneath that, so infrastructure is a piece of what you know you, your group owns, yes? Yes. Uh, give us a little bit, kind of scope that out for us, what that means when, you know, kind of the, the, the pieces that allow you to deliver those services to your constituents. Right, so, uh, you know, it, it starts with lots of things that people don't see, right? So IT is often very hidden. If we're doing our job well, people don't really notice us. Um, so, we, like I said, we have dark fiber all throughout the town that enables us to, uh, to do everything from public safety communication, um, data replication, allows for DR, so we have multiple uh, sites for our data. Um, we run Compellent SANS um, uh, based off uh, running uh, Dell uh, servers, running VMware. And uh, we run two different setups, one at the town hall and another at my police department, and that provides my disaster recovery and things like that. Um, from there, you know, then you start looking towards facing of customers. You know, we, we need to, to run uh, bills uh, for taxes and water and utilities, things like that. So all those pieces start to play in. We're, we're continually looking to grow in that area. So one of the areas that we're actually looking at right now is uh, increasing our presence online as far as people's ability to apply for permits online, to have inspectional services done online, to, uh, to pay their bills online. You know, I think everybody wants their experience online to be Amazon, yeah. right? Go open up your cart, buy a, put a bunch of things in there, hit pay and be done. And, and that's the direction we're trying to move these yeah, days. Sean, some of the fascinating conversations I've had in the last few years is when you talk to uh, you know, government agencies, uh, municipalities and the like, and you know, that word gets thrown out, digital transformation and what that means from you. Right, you know, today, you know, me, I live in a town here in Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, why can't everything just be something that you know? I talk to my home assistant, and you know, it just gets done magically, and it's nice and easy. But you know, there's a journey that we all need to go on, and uh, you know, there's some things that you know you don't have unlimited budget and unlimited headcount to be able to manage that. So, uh, talk to us a little bit about you know, does digital transformation mean something in your world? And, you know, how are you helping to deliver some of those, you know, mobile enabled services? Yeah, so, so that, that really, I run into really two challenges there, multiple challenges, more than two, but, but two really big challenges. One is um, getting people used to the idea of doing things in a way that they haven't done it before. You don't need to come to the town hall, go online and do it. Um, you uh, have to understand that um, billing, if you pay online, you pay with a credit card, there's charges that get assumed. With Amazon, that gets eaten by the, the 
product managers and things like that. Well, we don't have that, so, so those are surprise fees for people. So those are challenges to teach people about. We also then have uh, problems with teaching people within the town. Hey, you know, I've always done my business X way. People come and see me, they do things, they fill out this form, they move along. And it's kind of transforming their abilities to understand and move in that technical age also. Um, those are kind of the two biggest areas. Um, outside of that is, is you know, the, the upside is huge. We, we're talking to another community that has kind of gone to these things online, and they say they're getting like 40 to 60 percent of their building permits between midnight and 6 a.m. Um, that's a whole new world for the way the government has worked in the past. Yeah, it's Idris, it, Sean, you know, come on. I, I live in a town here in Massachusetts. We are proud of our 300 year old legacy and the exactly. way things are done here, um, which is a little bit different than the conversation we're generally having uh, in IT these days. Yes, no? <laughs> yes for sure. <laughs> um, Great. So uh, you mentioned a little bit, you know, I heard Compellent Sand, you've got disaster recovery and all these pieces. Uh, so tie us into this event. You know, what brings you to WTG Transform? Of course, I, I know Compellent is a you know long history of, of the team here, Scott and the team. Yeah. So how long have you been working with them? And tell us a little bit about the relationship. We've, we've, we've been, we've had a Compellent Sand actually installed by Winslow. It's, it's got to be nine plus years ago um, to get started. And uh, it's just kind of been one of those things that grew. You know, we, we, we started with Compellent and then Dell bought Compellent. We had HP servers and while well, it was nice to kind of to have everything together, so we moved to our Dell servers. Um, but I love to come here and see kind of where things are moving, where Winslow is going, um, where there's opportunities for me kind of to, to meet people's needs in ways that they're looking for. Um, that maybe I don't know about, um, ways I can protect our, our data, ways I can protect my, my constituents, my residents. Um, those are all concerns and, and this is a great opportunity for kind of see all those different pieces to get my hands on things once in a while or, or to hear a, you know, something that would get me moving in a direction maybe I hadn't previously looked at. Sean, is there any initiatives you have or technologies that you're poking at that you'd like to understand more, things that you're looking for from kind of the vendor community that would make your world easier? Uh, you know, uh, it's hard to know what you don't know. Yeah. Um, and so there, there's always something new. Every time I get here, I see something that I'm like, man, this could really be transformative for us. Um, it's, it's often difficult to figure out how to and when to implement those things. Um, so I don't know that I have, you know, I don't know that thing. I don't know yet. I think I, I haven't found that, that key hot button for this year, I, I don't think. Yeah, so I'll, you bring up a really good point. A question I actually asked for years is how do you keep up? Mm -hmm. And of course the answer is, I don't care if you're the smartest person at the most yeah. important company in the world, no one can keep up with all of it all the time. So the question is, who do you rely on to help you to understand and learn some of those new things? Yeah, so I mean, you know, we all, we all look at things from media and um, you know, there's uh, Spiceworks is a great community I use, but, but my VARs are, are kind of, that's, that's really where the rubber meets the road for me. And, and um, you know, Winslow has just been, there are many things that I would, I'll take and leave. You know, there's a technology I use, and if I had to replace it, I get rid of it. Well, Compellence, Wins Winslow, that combo is, I mean, it's cold dead hand technology. I mean, it doesn't leave, it's not going any place. Um, you know, they're, they're crucial to me, knowing where to go, how to go. Um, they help me figure out roadmaps. They, uh, you know, they've always kind of gone above and beyond in, in making sure that, um, that my needs, needs are met and that I know the direction things are going kind of before I get jammed into a spot where I can't get out of. Yeah, so last question I have for you, Sean. When you talk to your peers here, do you have to come some of the same concerns and the same looking at technology, or are there opportunities or challenges you have working for, uh, you know, a town government that, you know, maybe the, the, the average mid-sized business would Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think we share a lot of, of security concerns. Security, uh, I think our, our concerns are very much aligned, right? We're all worried about, about what's happening outside of our environment. We're concerned about the weakest link, which tends to be our end user's ability to click a button. Um, but um, outside of that, when we get to like how business really works, at times we're very different, at times we're very similar. So um, my needs for disaster recovery, again, two buildings across town, that works for me. If I lose those two buildings across town, two, three, four miles, I've lost everything I care about. Where a company, you lose a, you know, something, you need to have backups across the country. So, so there's some, some different needs, but the reality is we both need to protect our data. We both want to provide quality service to the people that depend on us. We both want to be moving in positive directions. We both have const constraints on our budgets. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot of overlap for me that I can pick up information here, even if sometimes the exact model they use isn't the same as what I would use. All right, uh, last question I have for you, Sean, is uh, when I travel, 
you know, I, I live about, you know, 26.2 miles from, from downtown Boston. But I say I'm from Boston because people definitely outside this country and even across this country don't necessarily know much of Massachusetts. So when you talk to somebody, how do we put Weymouth on the map? So Weymouth is on the south shore of Boston, um, but uh, generally I would say the same thing. I'm from Boston, um, but uh, we're, what, like you said, I mean, we're, we're less than 10 miles really from, from the edges of Boston. Um, we're right along the water. Uh, we have one, actually one of the busiest uh, ports in, in Massachusetts, um, outside of Boston itself, Boston Harbor. Um, and uh, so, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of right here in the middle of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's getting close to beach season. It's actually the first day of summer here. So, Sean, thank you so much for sharing the story, Town of Weymouth, and uh, what's happening in your world. Really appreciate you joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll be back with more coverage here from WTG Transform 2019. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks for watching theCUBE.